In the previous two videos, what we've taken a look at is determining the slope of a line just based on a graph that's been given to you. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at how do we actually use the slope of a line applied to a physics problem. Let's get into it. Today I'm not going to get into deriving the equation, but what I want to do is I want to take a look at how can we use the slope and apply it to an equation that is representative of, of a physics problem and actually use that slope to determine the parameters of our equation. What we're looking at is we're looking at a simple pendulum. As it turns out, the equation to determine the period of the pendulum is given by t, which is the period, is equal to 2 pi times the square root of l divided by g. And in this case, l is the length of the pendulum and g is the gravitational acceleration. In the problem that we're doing, the gravitational acceleration is going to be fixed at 9.81. Therefore, the slope is going to be also fixed as 2 pi divided by the square root of g times the square root of l. Now, how do we plot this? You're used to seeing something like y equals mx plus b in terms of a linear equation. In this problem, we don't have any b, so we're going to go ahead and ignore that for now. Therefore, we have y equals mx. In our simple pendulum, m is going to be 2 pi divided by the square root of g, and x is going to be the square root of l. So I need to plot the period, t, as my y, and I need to plot the square root of l as my x. What I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to plot the period versus the square root of the length of the pendulum, and then the slope should come out to be 2 pi divided by the square root of g. What I've done is I've created a MATLAB simulation that will allow me to vary the parameters in the problem so I can vary the, the length of the pendulum. What I will do is I will plot the period versus the square root of L, and then from that we will take a look at what does the slope mean in terms of this type of physics problem. First, let me just give you an overview of what we're looking at. This is in MATLAB Simulink, and if you have some interest in Simulink, we can do a video at some later point. But I just want to set up the problem. What I have is a pendulum on the left-hand side. I just have a pendulum that is fixed at the top, and then I have a ball attached to a string. So the ball is the red part at the bottom, and the string is the vertical red line that you see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at some angle, release it, and let it oscillate back and forth. On the right-hand side, you can see a scope window that is just going to record the time that it takes for the ball to move back and forth. And so from the peak, from one peak to another peak, that is the period, the time it takes to get from one side to the other side. From that, what I can then do is I can change the length of the string and then I can look at how that affects the period of the oscillation and then I can go and I can plot the period versus the length and see what we can come up with in terms of uh, the slope of our linear equation. Towards the bottom of the screen in the center what I have is I have a place where I can change the variables in my simulation. So you can see currently I have the length set to 0.24 that's the length of the string I have the gravitational acceleration set to 9.81 meters per second squared. The mass of the ball is set to 2 kilograms. And the angle that I'm going to initially release it from is set to 5 degrees. On the right-hand side at the bottom, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I'm going to use to plot my data and record the data from the simulation. On the left-hand side, you're just going to be able to see the pendulum swinging back and forth and at the top you're going to be able to see the period of the oscillation. So what I'll do is I'll change the length to 0.25 meters and then I'm going to run the simulation. And you can see the length change quite a bit. Now what I can do is I can just record the time that it takes between one peak and another peak. So you can see on the top plot that I have the peaks marked in this case, the first peak is at 3.009 seconds. And the second peak that is marked is at 5.019 seconds. 
in this case there are two periods between those peaks so I'm going to put the number of periods as two so it calculate basically subtracts 5.019 minus 3.009 divided by two and just calculates the period from one peak to another peak so the period in this case is 1.005 seconds now I'm going to change the length to be 0 0.5 and I'm going to run the simulation again you can see it's quite similar and I'm just going to do the same thing that I did previously. So the first peak is at 7.094, the second peak is at 8.514 and in this case that's just one period. I'm going to speed this up so we can get through this and then I will talk about what we can do with the slope of the line between the relationship between the period and the length of the pendulum. Now that I have a bunch of data for different lengths of the string, we can now take a look at the plot from that data. Now we are switched over to Excel, and so I have on the right hand side, I have a plot where I'm plotting the square root of the string length on the x axis versus the period on the y axis. So the string length is in meters, the period is in seconds. And what I've done is I've fit a linear equation to the data because in this case the, the data does look linear. And you can see that there's an equation on the graph showing the slope and the y-intercept. In this case we're just going to ignore the y-intercept because it should be approximately zero and it's 0 .005 so it's pretty close to zero anyways. So what we want to really look at is the slope which in this case is 2.0021. What we've already discussed is that the slope should be 2 pi divided by the square root of g. The slope is 2.002 2 pi divided by the square root of our gravitational acceleration which is 9.81 that value is about 2.006 so our slope should be 2.006 it's actually coming out to be 2.002 .002, which is quite close um, what you will find out is that as the initial angle that we, we release the pendulum from gets larger the slope is going to have more error because this is only valid for small angles and so in this case 5 is I would consider 5 degrees to be a small angle and we only have an error of about 0 0.004 out of 2 which is quite small so we can assume that there is a linear relationship between the square root of the length of our string and the period of our oscillation and that linear relationship is given by a slope of 2.002 .002, which is simply 2 pi divided by the square root of g just by doing a simple experiment by releasing a ball attached to the end of a string you can come up with the relationship between the length of the string and the period of the oscillation and once you have some understanding that is also related to the gravitational acceleration you can calculate that the relationship is simply given by the period is equal to 2 pi divided by the square root of g times the square root of the length and so this would be how you how you derive an equation relating parameters in order to try to simplify a physics problem.